Hi, welcome to Digging for Truth. I'm your co-host, Henry Smith. And our program is sponsored by the Associates for Biblical Research. In our last episode, we were talking about the crossing of the Red Sea, the great miracle of the Egyptians chasing the Israelites across the sea and God delivering them from the bondage of Egypt. In this episode, we're going to be turning our attention to uh, the location of Mount Sinai. And uh, we've had a research project here at ABR for a number of years on this very question. Joining me today, once again, is Dr. Bryant Wood, Director of Research with ABR. Welcome, Bryant. Thank you. Back once more. Good to be with you, We Henry. love having you here. And my co-host and Director of ABR, Scott Lancer. Scott, welcome back. Good to be with you, Henry. I appreciate you guys very much. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Scott, for mm -hmm. the first question for this episode. Well, we, we had been talking uh, uh, in... Uh, about the crossing of the Red Sea. But today, we're going to be focusing on uh, Mount Sinai and its location. And uh, this is a fascinating subject. Mm -hmm. um, now, there is a traditional site for Mount Sinai, uh, and we can talk about that. Uh, Brian, if we could take a moment to talk about that. But also, um, we want to talk about the requirements for the mountain, for a mountain to be Mount Sinai. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you could uh, discuss some of those things with us. Yes, OK. Well, uh, we do have a traditional site in the southern uh, Sinai, which uh, when you take a tour to Egypt many times, they will take you over there and let you climb up Mount Sinai, very high mountain, Jebel Musa is the Arabic name for it. Uh, but it just really does not meet the biblical requirements. Uh, we've talked about uh, how uh, far the Israelites could travel in a day and being only about six miles and you have to take into account they would stop for Shabbat, you know, not travel mm -hmm. on the seventh day. Uh, so that really limits the scope of where they could get to. Now the Bible is very specific. Uh, it gives us some uh, time indicators and you can divide the journey actually into two parts. Uh, we read that it took them 30 days, one month, to reach the uh, desert of Sin. That was like a halfway point. And we think we know where that is. There's a uh, mountain called Sinai, which probably uh, still retains that uh, word Sin. And there's a desert there. Uh, and then from... Uh, the desert of Sin to Mount Sinai was another 30 days. So they reached Mount Sinai in just 60 days. So this uh, location at the uh, southern uh, end of uh, the Sinai is a, is a bit of a stretch to reach it. They might be able to do it, but uh, it's, it's pretty well uh, at the end of what you could do in 60 days. Uh, and, but a, a more important factor is that we learn from the biblical text uh, when Moses was uh, out with Jethro's flock at the, it's called the backside of the desert. You remember Moses now is living in Midian uh, before the Exodus and he appeared to uh, God appeared to Moses at the burning bush, which was at the uh, mountain of God, Horeb. Well, that's Mount Sinai. And in fact, the Israelites return to Mount uh, Horeb, to the mountain of God for the Ten Commandments, and then it's called Mount Sinai. So there's several names given to that uh, holy mountain. Uh, so if, if Moses was there uh, pasturing the fox of Jethro from Midian, Midian is way up at the northern end of the Gulf of Aqaba, the Gulf of Elat. That's a w long ways from the southern Sinai. And so that would put it up closer to the north end of the uh, Gulf of Elat. Uh, and so... That's an argument against the uh, southern location. And really, mm -hmm. the only argument supporting the southern location is tradition. 
And whose tradition is that? It's basically the Coptic Christians that were driven out of Egypt in the Roman period, persecuted, and they were driven out. So they settled in this area. And if you know anything about the Copts, you know that they love to have uh, holy sites. Uh, and they've established them all over Egypt for uh, where the Holy Family went, you know, when Mary and Joseph fled to Egypt with the baby Jesus. Uh, they say, oh, he stopped here and he did this miracle here. He stopped at that church over there. And they, they have set up actually a pilgrimage <laughs> all over mm -hmm. Egypt to the Coptic churches where all kinds of things have happened. Yes. I think exactly the same explanation applies to this Mount Sinai. They wanted a holy place that would attract pilgrims and, mm -hmm. and it's, it's stuck, you know, but that's the only the only argument is tradition, and it's a weak argument. The area up around the northern end of the Galilad is a, is a much uh, more uh, compelling location, and we have various lines of evidence which suggest that that's the area. So if you lay out the itinerary, you'll find that to get uh, from Ramses to this uh, desert of Sin would take you 30 days traveling about six miles a day. And then from that uh, Mount Sin to a place called Jebel Kashem at Tarif, near the northern end of the Gulf of Elat, is another 30 days. Now I should mention uh, that uh, myself and several colleagues from ABR actually traveled this route mm -hmm. and measured the distances and uh, looked at the water sources along the way and so on. And uh, from the distances we measured, it, it fits exactly to be a place where the Israelites could uh, travel to in 60 days. And so this is a very attractive candidate and uh, it fits the biblical account uh, much better than the southern Sinai location. Well, Bryant, uh, so the first thing we have to do is repeat it for our audience. We're going to say uh, a Jebel Keshem et Tarif. Am I saying that right? That's right. right. All right, we're going to put that on the screen. We'll put it on several times. We're going to show where it is, the mountain that you've identified as part of the research. And um, uh, I think what we'll do is mention the Trans-Sinai Highway, which runs past near that. Yes, absolutely. Okay? So we're going to leave that for our audience because uh, we've got to go to our break. Mm -hmm. So, uh, folks, we've identified a mountain. We're going to show you some of that on the map, show you where ABR has been in the Sinai Desert. We've actually been there to do the research, and we'll be right back after this message. In a culture of intense Bible-denying skepticism, Associates for Biblical Research exists to strengthen followers of Jesus by affirming the authority of the Bible. Our archaeological fieldwork and original research form a strong foundation in upholding the reliability of the scriptures. For students or anyone asking if they can really trust the Bible, please visit our website and partner with us by joining our prayer team or financially supporting this ministry. And thank you for standing with us. Hi, welcome back to Digging for Truth. I'm your co-host, Henry Smith, and I'm here with Dr. Bryant Wood, Director of Research for the Associates for Biblical Research, and with my colleague, uh, Scott Lancer, who is the co-host and Director of ABR. We've been talking about the location of Mount Sinai. We mentioned the, a traditional site called St. Catherine's Monastery is built there. We didn't mention that, uh, but we feel that's too far south, too far away, based on the biblical text. And in our last uh, segment, Bryant, you sort of teased the audience a little bit. So, Scott, why don't you go ahead and talk a little bit about that. Ask Bryant about that, if you would. Well, we were talking about Jebel Keshem et Tarif, <laughs> and we got to keep saying that. <laughs> and as I mentioned it to, to uh, my colleagues here, that it rolls off the tongue. <laughs> but, Bryant, let's talk about that location, because it, it is a good fit for uh, the biblical evidence and also the actual formation of that mountain was a good location. Mm -hmm. So people mm -hmm. could gather around it and actually hear Moses. Yes. Well, uh, 
when you become familiar with uh, the Sinai Peninsula in antiquity, you learn that there are a limited number of uh, trails, if you will, or roads that go through that area uh, because you're limited by the water supply along the way. And so there are certain roads that have been developed. Scholars have investigated. They know pretty much where these roads went. And a major road was what I refer to as the Trans-Sinai Highway. Now that was the road actually from Egypt to Midian, to the north end of the Gulf of Elat. So when Moses fled, that's probably how he ended up in Midian. He was trying to get as far away from Egypt as he could. And so he traveled east across the Sinai Peninsula and he just ended up in Midian. You know, of course, he's not gonna stop in the Sinai. That's a lousy place to, to stop. Once he got across the Sinai, he was pretty well free from the Egyptians. So he, mm -hmm. you know, he goes to Midian. Uh, then, when he is out uh, pasturing the flocks, he is on the far side of the desert. So it appears that he, again, traveled this uh, Trans-Sinai Highway. Uh, and that's when God appeared to him at the burning bush. So he's still on that Trans-Sinai Highway. In fact, uh, we read that he was at the mountain of God. He was at Mount Horeb. Mm -hmm. uh, and an interesting passage in that uh, burning bush episode is Moses complains to God, well, I can't speak and I can't talk to the Egyptians. And God says, well, I'll be with you, you know, I'll help you. And I'm sending your brother to you. He will speak for you. Aaron is already on his way. <laughs> mm -hmm. How did Aaron know where Moses was? Well, maybe God appeared to him in a dream or something. But Aaron would take that very same road, Trans-Sinai Highway, and he would come and meet Moses there at the uh, mountain. Now, we have a very interesting passage in Deuteronomy 1-2, dealing with the uh, distance from the uh, Mount Sinai to Kadesh Barnea. And it says it takes 11 days to travel from Mount Sinai to Kadesh Barnea by the Mount Seir Road. Well, Kadesh Barnea is to the north. And uh, it actually extended further south from Mount Sinai. But it was a north-south road. So the Bible really, uh, we've mentioned there's a lot of candidates for Mount Sinai and Saudi Arabia and this place and that place, uh, Mount uh, St. Catharines and so on. The Bible actually gives us the address. It's at the corner of the Trans-Sinai Highway and the Mount Seir Road. That's exactly where Jebel Kashemet Tarif is located. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, everything seems to come together. It's this being the proper uh, location. Now, Moses, of course, <coughs> returns to Egypt. How does he get there? Trans-Sinai Highway. When the Israelites leave Egypt, we cross the Yom Suf with them, then they go south. We know for sure they went south. We know some of the locations. And then what road did they take? They took the Trans-Sinai Highway. Because if you remember when they got to Mount Sinai, who comes out to meet Moses? Jethro, his wife, his kids. They're near Midian. You know, they're not down in southern Sinai. Yeah, yeah. They're, yeah. They're, they're traveling the same road back and forth. That's where the holy mountain is. When people hear you say highway, they're imagining a highway. <laughs> but we're talking about a, 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 a path, a road. Well-traveled. Well-traveled. Yeah. People walking, yeah. carts, yeah. animals, yeah. all that. Yeah. And yeah. in an ancient world, there, there would have had to have been that through the Sinai because there was trade that took place between oh, yes. Egypt and Canaan lots and all of, the way up into Asia. Lots of trade. So, so this makes a lot of sense. These, these routes were well-traveled and well-marked. Mm -hmm. And so it was, uh, even though Moses had never been there, when he fled, I'm going to go east and this was the road you took. 
Right. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, as, as opposed to wandering out into the desert just randomly yeah, where he would right. have perished, it seems sense even if he didn't know where he was going that he would have followed a road that was well traveled that mm -hmm. where people were on. So it was maybe he would have perceived it as being a little safer, mm -hmm. perhaps. Sure. I guess we can't say it was well lit though, can we? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> well, you get the idea when you yeah. read the account in Exodus. They're just wandering around. They're not wandering. These places are along a well-established route that people traveled all the time. So the corner of the Mount Seer Road and the Trans-Sinai Highway is where you think, and in Midian, it's got to be in Midian, and where the evidence sort of comes together. Mm -hmm. And so uh, this mountain, uh, Jebel Keshem et Tarif, maybe you could give a taste of the 30 seconds of a little <laughs> bit of what's been found around it. And yes. then we'll, and we'll pick it up in the next segment. Yes. Uh, we are quite familiar with this place because quite a bit of, uh, I wouldn't say it's archaeological work, but ex exploration. Up on the top of the mountain, uh, and when we were there, we, we got up on top and visited the area. Up on top, there are graves, uh, cyst graves, piles of stones. And uh, on the top and also around the base, there are many animal figures made of stone pressed into the hard uh, desert floor. Uh, very uh, strange uh, groupings of stones to form rectangles, to form uh, like a wall between mm -hmm. the area where there's a lot of these stone foundations or enclosures and the mountain, almost like a barrier. You're not to go past this point, you know. Yes and all kinds of indications that this was a special holy mountain revered in antiquity with the burials of important people and these uh, stone enclosures, whatever people used them for, that could be associated with the Israeli encampment there, uh, could have some other cultic function. It's hard to say, but there's right. a lot of interesting material there that suggests this was a very special place in antiquity. No big city there, but people visited there quite often, probably because of its uh, religious significance in antiquity. Well, we're going to pick up with that in our next segment, talk a little bit more about the mountain that we think could be a candidate for Mount Sinai. We'll be right back. Bible in Spade is a non-technical quarterly publication published by the Associates for Biblical Research. Written from a scholarly and conservative viewpoint, Bible in Spade supports the inerrancy of the biblical record and is a must-read for both the serious Bible student and anyone asking if they can really trust the Bible. Archaeological evidence, properly interpreted, upholding the history of the Bible. Subscribe today at BibleArchaeology.org. Hi, welcome back to Digging for Truth. I'm your co-host, Henry Smith, and we're discussing the location of Mount Sinai. There's been many proposed locations suggested over the centuries by researchers, by Christian scholars, and so on. And we've been discussing some of the work that ABR has done uh, on this. Uh, here today with me is Scott Lancer, co-host of Digging for Truth, and Dr. Bryant Wood. Now, Bryant, we were talking about Jebel Keshem et Tarif. We're going to get our audience to practice that at home. Everybody repeat that after me. Jebel Keshem et Tarif. Uh, but we think this is a good candidate. You shared a couple of evidences around the mountain, some graves and stuff. So let's talk about this mountain some more. Uh, we're going to show pictures to our audience, you know, of uh, the expedition that we did there about 10 or so years ago. So go ahead. Why don't you continue with that, please? Yes. Well, uh, I think we, we mentioned that... Uh, it took the Israelites 60 days to get there, and we can pretty well map out the stopping points along the way. And the travel time that uh, would take uh, fits exactly to be able to reach this location in 60 days' time. Now, we also have this other very interesting uh, passage in Deuteronomy 1.10, or excuse me, 1.2, that talks about uh, its 11-day journey from uh, Mount Sinai 
to Kadesh Barnea. Now, Kadesh Barnea, of course, was a, a camping place for the Israelites for a long period of time. I think they spent most of their time in the uh, Sinai at Kadesh Barnea. It's north of Mount Sinai, and the text says it takes 11 days. Well, there again, if you uh, measure that distance, we weren't able to get up there when we visited Jebel Keshem at Tarif because it was an area uh, not safe to travel yeah. in as it is today. <laughs> I don't it's very common it, in the Sinai, security uh, yeah, issues. Yeah, yeah, near the border with Israel. So, uh, but on the map you can see that it's about 75 miles and so 11 days, you know, that's roughly seven miles a day within, uh, easily within the capability of uh, Israelites with all of their families and so on to get up there. So that's a, a very important uh, point in helping us locate uh, where Mount Sinai should be. It's got to be an 11 day journey from Kadesh Barnea. Now there's some that would question the traditional location, but uh, this one that's accepted by most scholars fits very nicely with uh, Mount Sinai here at Jebel Kashem at Tarif. Uh, it's a relatively low mountain. Uh, hopefully we can get a picture up there so folks can look at it. Uh, it takes maybe 30 minutes to, to climb up to the top. And I think uh, that, again, fits with what we read in the Bible. Now the traditional Mount Sinai, down at Mount St. Catharines, that is a job to climb that mountain. Uh, I've done it once, that's, that's enough. But <laughs> when, when you go there, you typically spend the night down at the bottom of the mountain and uh, your guide will wake you up at 3 a.m. or something because you want to make the climb while it's still dark so you can see the sunrise from the top of uh, Mount uh, St. Catharines, Jebel Musa. And it's, it's well worth it, but it's about a three hour hike. And you have to, of course, have the guide because you've never been there and he, he knows the way very well and it's dark, it's night. You it's know. the middle of the night. Yeah, yes. so, so you get up there. So it's a strenuous, arduous climb. Uh, and when we read the account of uh, Moses receiving the law from the Lord, and he, he went up and down that mountain at least five times. I counted five times in the text. Maybe I missed a couple, I don't know. Sure. Uh, here's an 80-year-old man, and I can really sympathize with Moses. <laughs> an 80-year-old man making that climb well, Five we, times? Uh, we hope you make it to 120, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but Jebel Etchum, catch him at Tariq. I can picture that. I can imagine Moses going up and down there five mm -hmm. times. It's not, not that bad of a hike. It's quite, uh, uh, you get to the northern, is it the northern end? Uh, it's rather gentle and uh, takes you right up. And it's, uh, it's an easy climb. So that makes more sense to me. In fact, I think there's actually a, a Jewish tradition that it was a low mountain. Mm. Of course, Mount uh, St. Catharines is very, very high. I think it's the highest mountain. I think that's why they chose it, because it was the highest mountain in the southern <coughs> Sinai. Mm -hmm. And uh, so then there's these, uh, we talked about uh, a little bit, these strange formations, stone uh, lines of stones and enclosures. and. Uh, if we had that map up on the screen, you could see them. And it's interesting, these little encampment areas, whatever you want to call them, there's 12 of them, which is quite interesting. And then there's a, a kind of a long, might call it a fence, between this encampment area and the mountain. And you remember God commanded Moses, don't let the Israelites get near that mountain. You know, this might yes. have been a, a warning uh, sure. barrier, so to speak, you know. Uh, and uh, with all these uh, evidences that it was a holy place and uh, in the right place, it, and as Scott mentioned, there is actually like an amphitheater formation on one side of the mountain where Moses could have addressed the People Israelites. People could have heard their voice, yeah. heard the voice of yeah. Moses. And the caves on top, there's a cleft up there. We have a picture of one of our guys in, the, in this cleft. It just yeah. all 
really seems to meet the requirements and I think is a very good candidate for well, Mount Sinai. Brian, thank you for sharing all <laughs> that. Thank you for sharing your research and we're gonna have all that up on the screen for our audience good, and good. we're grateful for all that you do with the ministry of ABR. Friends, uh, thank you for joining us for these episodes on Mount Sinai and the sea crossing. We hope you've been edified by them. Uh, we can't prove these locations for, for sure, but they certainly fit the biblical accounts and we hope that uh, you'll consider them as you consider the reliability of the Bible. Thank you for joining us today.